Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles. Quick warning before we get started, on Friday, or the day this video goes live, um, I've got the electricians in. So there may not be a video on Saturday, depends how the rewiring process goes. Just thought I'd warn you all, just in case of disappointment on the weekend. Anyway, this is Black FIFA 19 in the always popular... USS Des Moines, the American Tier 10 heavy cruiser. I think this may be the most popular ship in World of Warships, based on the number of replays that I get sent in and end up featuring on it. And a large part of that popularity is due to the terrifying rate of fire of the nine 8-inch guns. The Des Moines was the first American cruiser to be built with an automatic loading system for the ammunition hoists that supplied the shells to those main batteries. This thing fires a salvo every 5.5 seconds less with the appropriate commander skills and equipment modules. She's not the only cruiser in the game with a terrifying rate of fire. At tier 10 you also have ships like the Minotaur, the Neptune, the Worcester, the Colbert, and the latest edition of the USS Austin, but these are all light cruisers. What makes the Des Moines terrifying is that she has this rate of fire and, and she's a heavy cruiser armed with 8 inch or 203mm guns. The quite frankly terrifying amount of firepower that the Des Moines can put out it makes her extremely bad news for any enemy destroyers or even cruisers that are caught inside her radar range. And the amount of high explosive DPM that the Des Moines has means that she can whittle down battleships pretty quickly too. However, this frightening firepower is counterbalanced by the Des Moines' relatively weak armour. She has 27mm of bow and stern plating, which is fairly standard, although by no means universal amongst tier 10 cruisers. The Zhao, for example, only has 25mm of bow plating, but the difference is largely academic when you have battleships on with 16-inch guns or higher shooting at you all of which can overmatch and penetrate 27mm of plating as if it wasn't even there. And while there are battleships that tier 10 cruisers will have to fight that are not on with 16 inch guns and none of them are in this match. Uh, we interrupt this public service information film to bring you an enemy Marceau. This is the tier 10 French destroyer that doesn't have a smoke screen, has terrible concealment and thought that it might be a good idea to try to sneak an early cap in a match where there's an aircraft carrier and before he determined the locations of any of the enemy radar cruisers. Spoiler alert, it's not actually a very good idea. What's an even worse idea is having determined that there is in fact a Des Moines out here waiting to pounce on him who does have you radared. Watch what the Marceau does. Okay, yeah, obviously he'd launch torpedoes. Black FIFA was fully aware of this, this is why he kept close to the uh, landmass on his left. The radar's expired. Now remember the Marceau just took a fearsome battering from Black FIFA 19's 8-inch guns in just a couple of seconds before he managed to get into cover behind the island and continue attempting to flip this cap. It is my opinion that the Marceau should have activated his engine boost and gotten the hell out of there, because he's going to take the cap. But only for a couple of seconds, because here comes Black FIFA 19. Now he's getting torpedoed from one side, the Marceau that is, not Black FIFA. And he's about to start getting shot from the other side as well. And there it goes. So that side of the island is not nearly as safe as the Marceau thought it was going to be. So now the Marceau has to choose which side of the island does he want to die on because he's left it way too late to use his engine boosted extremely impressive 50 plus knot speed to get out of there. I mean, he still might have died anyway. But he's definitely going to die if he tries to do this. Oh, and there goes torpedo tubes. Yep, he's, he's having second thoughts. Guess what? Daylight, dollar short. So that was actually quite surprising because I don't know if you've been paying attention to chat. Black FIFA 19 is almost certainly running the matchmaking monitor. He was letting his teammates know not to let that Marceau get out alive because he's a very good player. But he made a very, very poor choice there. Even better... Black FIFA is now in an extremely strong position. He's not just neutralised the second of the enemy team's three destroyers, he's also assisting in flipping this central cap. 
and he's in a position to help defend, although it looks like the carrier is going for him rather than the Halland, but well, he's going to get the torpedoes away, but he's probably not going to get to do it twice, because Zhao, Des Moines and Halland AA. And while admittedly the Hakuryu's drop was just about as bad as it could have possibly been, attacking a very narrow cruiser, bow on, a lot of people would have panicked, overreacted, applied too much throttle and sailed right into one of those torpedoes. Not Black FIFA 19. But as mentioned, he's in a very strong starting position here. He sank the Marceau, he helped to flip the central cap, and he's in a radar cruiser in the middle of the map, which is very bad news for the enemy team. What's very bad news for him, however, is that Montana over there. Now remember we were talking about the 27mm of bow plating that may as well effectively not be there for all the difference it makes to a 16-inch armour piercing shell, and the Montana is on with lots and lots of 16-inch guns. However, it's not all bad news. I mean, it is. If one of those shells hits your nose, because there's a very good chance it'll go right through and penetrate the Citadel, which I don't think that was, because he would have taken a lot more damage. I mean, he took more damage than he wanted to take, obviously, but... The good news is that the Des Moines does at least have 30mm of belt armour, which can, if sufficiently angled, bounce 16-inch armour piercing shells. I thought he was going to try to slip into the cover of the island over there, but it doesn't look like he thinks he's going to make it in time, so he's angling away. Which should... I mean, he can still be citadel from the rear through his 27mm of rear plating. He's loading the armour piercing now that he has the broadside of the Montana to shoot at. The Halland's closing in. Who's the bigger threat? The Montana's decided that the Halland is the bigger threat. That's great news for Black FIFA. He can just continue to shower 8-inch armour piercing on the Montana with complete impunity. And I think, I'm pretty sure he's got him. Or if not him, somebody will. And it was him. And that leaves the Hindenburg and the Zhao as the only other two threats on this flank, both tier 10 cruisers. We're going to start with the Zhao. Now, as mentioned, the Zhao only has 25mm of bow plating, which can bounce 8 inch armor piercing shells, which of course is why FIFA starts with the high explosive. But the Zhao is dumb enough to turn to give broadside. He immediately switches to armor piercing, and uh, yeah, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that was a spanking of epic proportions. Immediately fires up his Hydro, because the Zao does have torpedoes and he is in range, and he may have launched them, and also his radar, to keep eyes on the Hindenburg, who also has torpedoes. And there they are. Hindenburg has two sets of torpedoes on each side, and this does look pretty bad, but... No, it's okay, Akazuki, don't panic. Black FIFA's got this. The problem here, of course, is that turning to comb the tracks of those torpedoes may be making him a sitting duck for any torpedoes that the Zhao has launched. So he immediately turns back in. The problem here is that he's given an uncomfortable amount of broadside to the Hindenburg's 8-inch guns. And while the Hindenburg was angled sufficiently to bounce his AP, Black FIFA 19 was not. Since shooting at the nose of a bow in Hindenburg is a complete waste of time with armour piercing, he raised his sights, managed to knock out one of the Hindenburg's forward gun turrets, paying careful attention to ensure he can angle as much as possible without running aground, and he's got the Hindenburg too. This flank is now secure. Well, almost. Not quite. There may still be a gearing around here somewhere. Black FIFA is pinging the map in his last reported location, but looking at where he was last seen, there's a decent chance that the gearing is instead attempting to commit suicide by going after the carrier. Right now, all Black FIFA wants to do is alert his teammates to the potential threat and flip this cap, and it's here where he gets spotted. Which must be the gearing, and probably indicates that the gearing is coming back to try to do something about this cap circle. Black FIFA again pinging the map in the location of Sector Charlie 7, his best guess as to the gearing's current position, and the Richtoven is actually paying attention. I guess he knows what's good for him, and he's sending the fighter bombers over to investigate. With the cap secured, any second now, there it is, it's time to go and help out the dive bombers. The radar's still on cooldown, we'll have it back in just over 30 seconds. 
He keeps pinging the map. The Richtofen is sending his dive bombers the wrong way. The gearing can see him, so he must be within the Des Moines surface detection range, 10.5 kilometers. The dive bombers are too far north. He keeps pinging Charlie 7, which is a remarkably good guess. Although the fact that the gearing can see him, and must be further to the north, means that there are a limited number of squares in which he could actually be. The friendly Zao is saying no, no, further north, up on the B line. Black FIFA insists no, he's down here on the C line. And sure enough, there goes the radar, and there's the gearing. Right on the border of the exact map location that Black FIFA was pinging. And that's going to be really bad news. I mean, he's getting shot at by the Zao. He's getting shot at by the Des Moines. Although he may have launched torpedoes. And he's definitely within torpedo range. Black Thief is going to have to wait another 16 seconds before he can use his Hydro. Come on. Don't let him get away. There go the Richthofen's dive bombers. Although I think the Richthofen has armor-piercing dive bombers, which are not exactly optimal for taking out destroyers. But he's dropped the fighter patrol on top of him. Which has bought them a few more seconds of visibility, but no more than that. Uh, patrol fighters have very, very low hit points and they're very easy to shoot down. And yep, there are the Gearing's torpedoes. He managed to clip the Zao with one of them. Can Black FIFA make it three for three torpedo beats? No, he was going too fast. He's going to take one on the stern. Ah oh, well, nobody's perfect. Now, while everybody is chasing the Gearing, and like everybody is chasing the Gearing... Well, with the possible exception of the team's Cristoforo Colombo over on the other flank, who probably has problems of his own, but pretty much everybody else is chasing after that gearing. And this tunnel vision has allowed the enemy team to flip the central cap, as well as go ahead on kills. And they're about to flip Bravo, and that's almost certainly going to be the enemy Worcester. Now, the gearing's managed to go undetected, although he's not going to stay undetected for long, not with a Hindenburg, a Zao, and a Richthofen chasing him, and he's running out of ocean to run away to. The team do manage to pull the kills back thanks to the Christopher Colombo sinking the enemy Stalingrad and can we just pay attention to the excellent support that that battleship is receiving from the friendly carrier who isn't chasing the gearing anymore. The Hindenburg and the Zhao have that covered and instead he's provided an air cover for the Christopher Colombo against the enemy carrier's attack aircraft. So well done to him. All of this does however mean that any fight that Black FIFA 19 gets himself into down here in the Bravo cap it's going to be all between him and the Worcester. AP was loaded. Unfortunately, no Citadels, and the Worcester has a huge health advantage. The Worcester also has equally terrifying high explosive damage per minute. And despite the implacable talent activating from the William Halsey legendary commander, which reduces his reload by a further 20%, the Worcester is entirely capable of winning this fight. As long as he doesn't show enough broadside to allow these armor-piercing shells to rip his citadel a new one. Black FIFA does knock out one of the Worcester's rear turrets and instantly switches to the armor-piercing. It's almost as if he could read the Worcester captain's mind because he's thinking to himself, if I can just get these three front turrets firing and that is a really, really bad idea. Enemy cruiser sunk. The Worcester <laughs> nearly had him. Even with just the one rear turret, I think he would have done it. But losing that turret was enough to make him panic and think that he needed to get the front turrets firing as well, which meant he showed an uncomfortable amount of ankle and Black FIFA absolutely savaged him for it with the 8-inch armor piercing shells. I'm not sure what Black FIFA's reload is now. I mean, he's almost certainly running the Adrenaline Rush skill. And we know that the Implacable talent just activated, giving him a 20% reload reduction. I wouldn't be at all surprised if his reload was below four seconds. Just think about that for a second. Ships like the Worcester are a terrifying opponent for players in cruisers, destroyers and battleships to face thanks to the 4.6 second reload on its six inch guns. I am fairly sure, and we'll probably find out once he finishes flipping this cap again, that he's actually got a sub four second reload on these 8-inch guns. Let's just see if that Yamato stays alive long enough for us to find out. Watching the reload counter. Holy shit, that's a 3.1 second reload! <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, in fact, he took a couple of hits from Yamato's secondaries. It's now a 2.9 second reload. You know what else that is? That's a dead Yamato. <laughs> I hope we can all agree that the Des Moines has very definitely still got it. In fact, I don't seriously think anybody was ever trying to say that the Des Moines had ever lost it. But just in case there was any further proof required, Black FIFA 19 just got a 4,000 base XP match. I don't think I've ever actually seen one of those before. I mean, I might have, but I can't remember. Either way, that is a spectacular result. So, Black FIFA 19, my hearty congratulations to you, good sir. Many more like that in the future, please. Everyone else, I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.